to articulate verbally. How many people sitting in this room or watching this or listening to this have been silent for 10, 20, 30 years? Not because the pain wasn't there, because it was so deep it couldn't be articulated in words. And Ruven tells his brothers, I'm a shame in my national. Tonight I ask forgiveness because there were so many children, and there are so many children, who were languishing in a pit, in the pit, in the abyss. And so many of us chose or inadvertently ended up not listening. We did not observe the mitzvah of Asher Kedushanu the mitzvah of Lishmoya The mitzvah is not to blow the shoifer, the mitzvah is to hear the voice of the shoifer. But why a shoifer? If God wants to hear a screaming, He should say on Rosh Hashanah, get up and go, woo! Why a ram's horn? And the great masters of Hasidus explain that primal pain can't be articulated even in a human voice. There is pain that can be articulated in words. There is agony that can't be articulated in words, but it can be articulated in a cry. Ah! And then there is agony, there is distress that can't be articulated even in a cry. It's called Kol Ha'pnima Eloi Shtama. It's an internal, intimate voice that is not audible. And the shaifer represents a primal voice from the core of the soul that we don't even have the ability to articulate through our own lips. We must go to that innocent, primal animal to articulate that coil, and we are responsible to shmoya kosha. And how many children over the last few decades were blowing this shoifer, not with their own voice, because their voice was taken from them. And we did not hear the call shoifer. So tonight I turn to many people sitting in this room and all around the world. And I say, we ask your forgiveness. We often judged you. We often ignored you. We misunderstood you, we criticized you, we rebuked you, some of us with good intentions, but we did not hear the culture. We ignored the culture. We were not ready to go out of our paradigms, we were not ready to go out of our comfort zones, we were not ready to open ourselves up to the reality of he tells me a few days ago that an 18 year old yeshiva boy declared himself in yeshiva as an atheist. His teacher rebuked him and said, how can a Jewish boy publicly declare himself as an atheist? It's heresy. It's despicable. It's fear. It's apicursus. It's heresy. And this therapist tells me that the boy trusts him. And the boy came to him, 18 years old, and he said, I'll tell you why I became an atheist. <clears throat> and this is what this boy said. For three years, when I was seven, when I was eight, when I was nine, each night, when I would go to bed, I would turn to Hashem, I would turn to the Rebbeinu Shalom, and I would say, save me. Save me from the babysitter, a relative. Save me from the babysitter. For three years I begged for the creator of the world to rescue me for the babysitter. I asked, kill the babysitter or let him move somewhere and he should not show up in my home. And he tells the therapist, I was on answer. I'm 18 today. I have two choices. Choice number one, if I believe in God, I have to reach the conclusion that Rahman al Islam is so cruel and so sadistic. And I don't want to believe that Hashem is cruel, so I chose the second option to believe that He doesn't exist. I want you to understand the atheism of this 18 year old contains such a 
sensitive, refined spirituality and amuna. You know why he's an atheist? Because he can't get himself to say that God is not a kerach of the an atheist. 